we savor, celebrate, ritualize, and worship wine and all its unique flavors. Yet chemically speaking, there's very little difference between one bottle and another. So how much of our appreciation of this artisanal treat is actually based on how it tastes? What we need to realize is we are very suggestible. So how we interpret the taste of something largely has to do with what we think it's going to taste like. Dr. Brian Wansink is a consumer behavior scientist who studies how social cues and changes in our environment can alter our behavior and the perceptions of what we eat. For example, if you serve Chef Boyardee on a china versus paper plate, people rate it as being a lot tastier. And people eating off a tablecloth think the food is better than when it's uh, served just on a bare table. If you end up turning lights down and turning candles up, people rate food as better. So really small things can make a massive difference in our perceptions. And given how complex the flavors of wine can be, and how many different ways we can describe it, we can really easily be guided or led to believe it's something that it's not. The deception begins before you've even taken a sip. You can be influenced by anything on the label. If you're looking for something, a wine that's you know, light and playful and not too serious, yeah, that bunny's going to make you say, wow, this wine really does the trick. If you're looking for something a little more serious, a little bit more uh, complex and dignified. You'll pick a wine with a more dignified label. Bunnies and brands aside, a single word can change your opinion. We brought people in with a really cheap $2 wine that we had uh, taken the labels uh, off of. We replaced it with labels that said it was either a, a Cabernet that was from California. A state known for quality wines. Or the label said it was from North Dakota. A state better known for its extractive industries. The test subjects not only hated the North Dakota labeled wine, but it also made them believe their meals were worse. These superficial changes can influence us dramatically, but the cue we pick up on the most is what we learn from other people. It could be what the person does next to us. If they take a drink and they, they, they scrunch up their face a little bit, well, you're going to bet we hate the wine if that's what they just did. Or when somebody says your wine has an earthy aroma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that you mention it, I'm, I'm looking for earthiness and I think I taste it. A complete stranger can even influence you. Take, for example, the sommelier. Sommeliers are basically busboys who happen to know a lot about wine. We don't really even know what their training is, but in our mind, they must be more of an expert than we are because they're the ones at the wine list. Or if you even order something from a sommelier and he nods approvingly, you rate the wine you subsequently drink as a lot tastier than if you just happen to pick it off the list yourself. Dr. Wanson cautions that you might also want to consider how much you drink. People, when pouring into a glass, will almost always pour 9% more white wine in the glass than will red wine. You see why? Well, it's because white wine's harder to see. Because nobody pours looking at the sides. You pour looking at the distance at the top. And you red wine drinkers beware. Red wine glasses are a little bigger at the bottom, and then white wine glasses are a little bit more narrow. So people pour, and boy, that wine's going up. It's not going up very fast, so they end up pouring about 12% more in red wine glasses than white wine glasses. So no matter where, what, how, or who you drink with, you're probably already under the influence. And maybe that's not such a bad thing. It's because really, being influenced makes you like, like the wine a whole lot more. The only reason you don't want to be influenced is you don't want to spend too much for wine. But even then, there's a silver lining. Consider this experiment. Researchers gave subjects two glasses of the exact same wine and told them one is from a $5 bottle and the other from a $45 bottle. Their brains were scanned as they drank, and the images showed that they experienced more pleasure from the pricier wine. However, they did not test if an empty wallet made a hangover worse. For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin. Like what you see? Check out our other two wine science videos 